We're about to have a huge panel right now. I need you guys to give me a little bit more energy. I said, Florida Supercon, how are you guys feeling? <laughs> that is more like it. Without any further ado, I would like to bring the state to the stage, the woman of the hour, the one and only, Kate Flannery! <laughs> Keep it going, guys. It is Kate. Hey, you guys, how are you? I'm not, okay, when I say Dunder, you say Mifflin Dunder. Mifflin! Dunder! Mifflin! Dunder! Mifflin! Thank you. I always wanted to do that. That was amazing. Good, good way to start. How are you doing so far? I, I'm good. I'm, I'm a little Mifflin. Sorry. Stupid. <laughs> now, this is, this is really cool because... I have to say, I've probably watched The Office about 10 times through, which I think is the, the case for pretty much everybody, right? Holy, and it, Yeah, and it's moly. like, you know, we put on Netflix and we're like, oh, we can watch this, but it's always The Office. <laughs> are you the same way? Like, are you an <laughs> avid Office watcher? I've watched it 10, 10 times through because I lived it. But, but I love that people watch it 10 times through, and I, uh, maybe I should watch it 10, should I? All right. Okay, maybe I, think I will. It, it kind of gets better, like as you watch it more, and like we get to know the characters. Like, like a like, fine wine from Scranton. It just yeah. keeps getting better. And <laughs> like I, I feel like I know you. Like you know, from watching. And you all this might. Uh, no, I don't know. I mean, no, I. But I totally get that, and I feel like I have relationships with shows like that too. So I'm, I totally get it, and I, I love that people um, love ev like remember everything about the show. So if I don't, don't hate me, okay? It's a, no, it's water in that cup is what we need to point Allegedly. out. Allegedly. <laughs> so what was your audition process like for The Office? Initially, I auditioned for the part of Jan, and clearly they went a different way. Um, <laughs> um, and then I didn't, so I d actually was not in the pilot. Um, and then um, I... They kind of had created this new character um, when, they first, when they got picked up and they... Because we just did six episodes for the first season. So I remember going in and like I literally found out I had to do it twice in one day. And I'm, I'm a, I, I worked at Second City in Chicago. So there were a couple other Second City actresses when I got there. And I thought, oh my God, they book everything. I'm never going to get this. Um, but I found out by the time I got home, I don't think I had a cell phone at the time. And not because they weren't invented, but because I was broke. <laughs> So I found out by the t literally by the time I got home, I, the phone rang like two seconds after I walked in the door, and I found out I got the job. So it was kind of crazy. Please clap. Yeah. Come on. Yeah. Just want to make sure you're awake. Sorry. You can stop. That's right. <laughs> so my my first like real question for you is, did you actually have to shave your head? <laughs> That's your first question. Um, uh, no, I did not. We actually had a bald cap guy, like the guy. Uh, do, uh, do we have any Trekkies out there? Um, the Star Trek movie from 1980, which was like the first movie after the TV show, they had a woman on that uh, in that movie that had a bald head. And um, the artist that did that, his name was Ed French. And so Ed French got to do Meredith's bald head. And it was four hours in, two and a half hours out. And we did it on and off for... We did it uh, for two weeks straight and then on and off for like the wigs. Sometimes the wigs would fall off when I Meredith had a bunch of wigs and... Season nine, so I, I, yeah, so I would have to, so I'd say all in all, it was like maybe like four weeks. So I have new respect for the sci-fi folks, man. <laughs> they, get, they earn every penny, trust me. Did you have a favorite wig? Um, the, the, uh, there was one that sort of looked like it was frosted. I, I, it was like, I, I couldn't figure it out. But the, even like the crappy Kate Middleton one that they sort of revamped for that, I thought that was hilarious. It wasn't even brushed. It was just a piece of crap with a, like a barrette in it. <laughs> I, I liked every color. Um, what about the kid that was your son in the show? Was it Jakey? Yes. Jakey. His, his real name is uh, Spencer Daniels. And he actually became a regular on the show Mom. He played, because he, when he got older. Um, but he was in, technically he shot three episodes of The Office. So it was the same kid that we used from um, Bring Your Daughter to Work Day, even though he was clearly a boy and Meredith can't follow the rules. Um, <laughs> So we did, he was back for the second episode he did, which they cut his part um, from the final cut. He, it was Company Picnic with um, Charles Minor, Idris Elba, when we were playing volleyball. Meredith gets in a fight with him, and she locks him in her car. It's so mean. It's so mean. It's, and then, of course, he came back for the finale, and he was the surprise stripper. And Meredith was so extremely proud. the same proud. kid. It's the same actor. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. I know. He got really tall. 
I feel a little dirty now, but all right. <laughs> okay, so we have a microphone that's set up right in the front of the room. Uh, is anything off limits for you, Kate? I'll let you know. Okay, great. So we will test those limits today. I'm not flashing unless there's cash involved. I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not flashing. Sorry. I'm not flashing. Sorry. So if you so. guys have any questions, I urge you, now is your opportunity. I know it's a little intimidating, the mic's down in front, but any questions that you guys may have, uh, now's your shot. Woohoo! <laughs> I like that they're clapping. They're like, yeah, you made it. All right. Hey, girl. Hey, how are you? So my question is, where do you think Meredith is today? I think Meredith is in Scranton. And she might be at Florida Comic Con. I'm, no, I'm just kidding. Um, I, I do think she's in Scranton, and I think um, I think she's still at Dunder Mifflin, as as was kind of answered. And she has her PhD, so that's why she drank so much. She was just in college. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Uh, hi. My question is, if you could have The Office exist in a TV universe with another TV show, what would it be? Oh my God, that's such a hard question. That's a smart. Qu- Good for oh. You. Maybe the Golden Girls, because then there'd be a lot of old people. I don't know. Um, <laughs> actually, I'm gonna no. I'm I'm gonna answer that seriously. I'm gonna say Cheers, which is about a bar, because my character was a drunk, so she would enjoy <laughs> a bar being close by and everybody drinking, maybe during their lunch hour. That's a great question. What's your name? Uh, Grantham. What's your name? Grantham. 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 What an awesome! Please clap for Grantham for having a cool name. Thank you, dude. Thank you. Thank can you. I, can That's I awesome. piggyback off that question because? From I've heard that possibly there was some relation with um, what's the show Always Sunny in Philadelphia, where they were, which also takes place, you know, yes. in the same city, and they were saying that well, Dennis, in the same state, right, yeah. same state, yeah. um, that possibly Dennis from Always Sunny was the Scranton Strangler. <laughs> Have you heard this theory? <laughs> That's the first time I've heard that theory, but that doesn't mean that it's not true. Um, uh, I, I think Creed wants to be the Scranton. You think Strangler. it was Creed? Uh, he wants to be. No, he's not, not. Toby. He's not. I think it's Toby. Toby. I think Creed's too obvious. I think Creed just likes to take the credit. Mm. This is Creed as a human being, not as the character. I'm just kidding. There's so (laughs) little uh, difference between Creed Creed and this character. Mm, (laughs) Thank you so much. Yeah. Uh, During the filming of The Office, uh, were there uh, other auditions or other gigs that you had and you had to go to that rather than filming The Office? And Um, did they have a stand-in? Uh, no, um, we saw you, you, when you make a deal, you cannot mm-hmm. do another show. Um, so I was grateful because I realized that some some episodes you could have put just a red wig on somebody and just had their back, um, and, it, and I could have just lost out on being a regular. But I love that like they used all of us all the time. They actually kind of sh- like literally the the guys that filmed. They were trying to figure it out for a season. They literally shot. They used to both work on um, Survivor. And they also used to do documentaries, but in the wild. Like, they literally shot animals in the wild. So they literally shot our characters as if we were literally in the jungle. And I feel like you kind of get that, right? I mean, I love that they did that. They were very specific. So literally the first season, we had to be at our desks all the time, or we had to be doing busy work, off real office work. They actually told us to bring papers, like paperwork. So I brought, like, you know, my tax forms and stuff. Because they wanted it to look authentic, and they wanted to be like, if they wanted to cut to somebody, that we were actually doing something and not just like planning on doing, you know what I mean? So it was kind of a really great process. Um, so that's a great question. Thank you so much. No Thank you. It's a banana. What's your name? Cole. You could, if you could tilt it down, Cole. Perfect. Hey, Cole. Go ahead. Uh, what was your favorite episode that you acted in or you just really liked the episode a lot? It's hard. I'm, I have two that come to mind right away. I loved doing the Meredith Walk of Shame in the um, Michael's Last Dundies because I got to do a whole scene with Will Ferrell as uh, Diego Vickers and, and Steve Carell as Michael Scott at Meredith's house, which we'd never seen Meredith's house before. And the house that they shot in, it was like a hoarder's house. We never, we should have shot the inside. It was so perfect. There were like pizza boxes like to the ceiling in the kitchen. It was packed with like old magazines. Anyway, um, the other episode that I really, really loved doing was um, Moroccan Christmas. Because um, I, even though I, I did not do my own stunt, I did not get, let my hair set on fire. That, that was, yeah, that and the bald cap are kind of a disappointment to most people, I'm sorry. Um, but um, I loved uh, Steve Carell, and I actually got to improvise the whole scene when, when um, Michael drags Meredith to rehab. That whole parking lot scene was completely made up and on the spot. And out of the corner of my eye, we, they had two people dressed like us in case one of us got hurt. They were going to use like a stunt double. And I was like, I don't care if I break my leg. I'm doing this thing. 
So it was really, really fun. And I, I think I actually screamed so much during that scene that I lost my voice <laughs> that night. But it was worth it. Those are great questions. Thank you so much. What's Hi, your name? This is, uh, I'm David. I'm a huge fan. And this is a bit of a weird question, but as a fan, I kind of want to know this. What was it like getting to flash Steve Carell? <laughs> Thank you so much! It was difficult. You know, I knew Steve um, before because I knew him like 15 years earlier from Second City. We were both there at the same time. So it was like somebody I knew was kind of like a brother. And like Steve's kind of shy and I feel like, oh gosh, what are we doing? <laughs> but I didn't find out till the day before that it was actually happening, oh. which is better. Um, and... It, yeah, it was. He was very respectful. He okay. told me. He said, "I'm not looking at you. I'm just looking at your clavicle." <laughs> I don't know what that is. <laughs> Which was supposed to make me feel better. But I was like, well, "What's wrong with me?" I was terrible. There's no good way to like navigate it. But he's a lovely guy, right. and uh, yeah. And thank God it wasn't HBO, so you guys didn't see more than you needed okay. to. <laughs> thank right. you for the question. Thanks. <laughs> What's your name? Taylor. Hey, Taylor. What is it like working on the voice acting for shows like Steven Universe and OKKO? OK because some of those shows have such good voice acting. And it's a little intimidating, it? yes. Uh, uh, it's a little intimidating because I am a, I'm, I'm a big Cartoon Network fan. I'm a huge regular, uh, regular show fan. Oh, like I, show oh my God. Yes. So I remember when I first uh, went in for the audition for OKKO OK and then we, I, I actually got to shoot the pilot, we got to record the pilot. I remember passing the door of the regular show people and I was like, oh my God, like I literally stopped. JJ, the guy that's the voice of, of Mordecai, I was like, oh my God, I'm not <laughs> um, uh, So, but you know, I have to say like some, some people get voiceover jobs because like they just get asked because if they're like big enough, they'll just put them in a movie or something, it's like an offer. But I actually had to audition for OKKO, OK um, which I'm glad I did because I felt like I earned it in a way. Yeah. Like, because sometimes like, you get offered something, and you're like, I don't know if I'm good for this. Like, you know, and people sometimes are nice and they give you a job. But I loved the whole process because then we actually got to kind of grow from the bottom up and like really kind of figure out what the show was about. And and Steven Universe, I was a huge fan of already. Yes. And Rebecca Sugar is a fantastic, fantastic mm -hmm. creative human being, and I love what she does. So yeah, I was really excited. That was an offer. Um, after I was doing OKKO, OK and I just did one, and then they had me come back for a few more right away. And so I've done five somewhere, five so far that have aired. I think I've got two more. So yeah, but yeah, thank, that's a great question. And I love voiceover, and I love Cartoon Network, and I love that you guys are so plugged in and that you you're paying attention. Really it's really awesome, and mm -hmm. I feel like um, it's such it's a really high art form. And I I don't like that the shows only last a short time. I want them to last way longer. Yeah, thank you so much. That's a great no question. Problem. Thank you. What's your name? Leo. Hey, Leo. Hi. How are you? Um, what's your favorite thing about being in the office and working with Steve Carell? Um, one of my favorite things is that I had the most comfortable, hideous clothes in the world. I never had to worry about it. Because seriously, sometimes if you're really dressed up, you have to worry about the way you sit and like all the, I had none of that. So I was so comfortable. And also, um, unlike other TV shows, sometimes you're doing a scene and you're, you know, you don't know where you're standing or whatever. We always had a place to sit, which is a big deal because you get there earlier, like you try to get there to beat every, you know, you want to be on time for all the other actors, especially the star. So I would, you know, call and then like we, our computers worked. I had like real stuff in my desk. I mean, I also had fake booze, but I had real stuff. <laughs> And it was awesome because it actually felt like I worked there, like I was literally going to my desk every day. It was kind of crazy. So they really created this thing where if there was a crew member sitting in your desk, if they saw you, they, they, they were told to get up so that you could like, get into character right away. And I thought that was pretty cool and very rare. And they definitely treated us like a family. And this is a really long answer, but thank you so much for asking. The Office is one of my favorite shows. I love it. You're so sweet. Thank you so much. Thanks. Thanks, Leo. What's Hello. your name? Liana. Liana, um, how are you? So remember that episode where Creed was the intern regional manager? What, right. do, what do you think would have happened if Meredith was the intern instead? Oh my God. I think it'd be the three martini lunch, baby. I think it'd be, I think the water cooler would be spiked. Uh, I think, um, I don't know. I, I, there, every day would be casual Friday. <laughs> And uh, I don't think you'd have to go to Toby if you were having a relationship with someone else in the office. That's what I think. That's a great question. Thank you so much. Thank you. What's your name? Hi. 
My name is Ashley, and I just wanted to say that I was so looking forward to seeing you at the con this year. Thank you, and Ashley. Thank you. I wanted to ask, who do you think is the funniest co-star on The Office? Um, you know what? I, I think uh, Rain Wilson is a genius. I, I think yeah. Dwight is the most demented yes. and wonderful <laughs> and earnest and uptight and insane and knowledgeable and I do think that Rain is more like his character than he cares to admit. He knows a lot about Battlestar Galactica. I'm just saying. He already did. Um, but I just think like that guy exists in so many people's lives and I just feel like what a perfect just the writing that he's he, and I feel like no one else could play that part. No one on the planet. He's the one. That's a great question. Thank, Thank you, you so much. Thank Thanks. You. Thanks Ashley. What's your name? Hi, I'm Andy. Hey, Andy. Uh, I remember you. How are you? I saw you earlier. <laughs> I saw you earlier. Hey, you at the uh, con? Okay, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I was wondering if there was any cast member in particular that uh, would goof off and make jokes and kind of waste time more than anybody else. Um, sometimes John Krasinski, he used to like to sing um, like the theme to uh, Entertainment Tonight. So stupid. <laughs> But in general, like, we were pretty, like, nobody was really holding up the, the game. You know what I mean? Like, no one was holding anybody hostage. You know, I feel like we, we, we had such a great time doing what was written that I feel like we didn't really do practical jokes because we were always laughing and trying not to laugh while we were shooting. So it was kind of like, you know, nothing was as funny as what we were about to do, you know? So it was kind of a rare situation in that. Okay. Thank, you. Thank you so much, Andy. That's a great question. What's hey your guys. name? Hi, how you doing? My name is Lewis. Hey, Lewis. Um, I wanted to ask you, what is your best story of Creed? Craziest one. Oh my God, there's so many. Um, <laughs> Creed. Um, maybe the the was it the s scream strike run. <laughs> he hit me the first time. He really hit me. <laughs> I was like, dude, we're acting. What are you doing? But I think that's the one they ended up using. Yeah. So I was like. Damn, like he just hit me right on my head. But I feel like that's the thing. It's like, I think there was a thin line. You know, Creed, that's his real name, yeah. Creed Bratton. And Creed was in the band, the Grassroots uh, from the 60s. And he was just, you know, kind of floating around. He was just like, a, you know, an aging hippie <laughs> who uh, just happened to like, like literally he was doing background work and they ended up moving him up, like giving him a part, which is crazy. Yeah. That's awesome. So, yeah, so he, he, he's, he's an awesome cat, and I feel like he's had, his trajectory is so unusual. I don't recommend anybody just try to do background work and try, expect to get moved up to a real part and become a regular on a show, because it may never happen again. I don't know. Yeah, but right? if, if it was going to happen to somebody, it couldn't happen to a nicer guy. That's awesome. So thank, thank you. you so thank much. you so much. Thanks. What's your Hi. name? Hi, I'm Veronica. I remember I saw an idea before. Yeah. Hi. <laughs> okay, so um, Meredith's character, is that reaching or can you see like a little bit of her? I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> How dare you? Uh, you know what? My dad owned a bar. It was an Irish bar. It was like a drinker's bar. Like a Flannery's Tavern in Philadelphia. And there was one woman that used to hang out there. And she, you know, like literally the bus driver would knock on, on the door of the bar to make sure she made her bus every night. <laughs> so, and uh, I actually, I waited table so long. I remember like in college, there was this one woman named Margaret and she was like the only woman drinking at the bar. And, and I remember being like, okay, who wants a refill? You want a refill? You want a, Margaret, you want a refill? And she'd say, it's so hard being Catholic. She'd like say something random, like you're like, wait a minute, I'm, like, I'm too busy to listen to you. But I, so I feel like there's, there's, I've seen women who drink, and I, so I know a, a lot of Merediths. Okay. I, I'm not sure if I'm the one that I'm saying that I know yet. I'm not ready to come, for, no. But, but I, I understand the beast completely. And, awesome. and I think I'm always pleasantly surprised by how much love there is for the office drug. <laughs> we all have a little merit. Yeah, I hope so. I hope so. Thank, <laughs> Thank you. you so much. Thank That's you. a great question. Thanks. Cheers to that. Yeah. What's your name? Hey guys, my name is Ben. Hey Ben. Um, I just had a quick question. Did, was there a scene that you guys filmed that was cut that you wish would have made it into the show? Don't get me started. Um, you know what? I have to tell you, the first time Meredith admitted to being an alcoholic was in the very first Halloween episode of season two and it got cut. The whole storyline got cut. And she was dressed like a bloody witch with brains coming out of her head. And you barely see, I think I like swiped the camera once. My whole storyline got cut. Also, another storyline, if you remember, um, 
the weight loss episode where um, Meredith has like, a, looks like she's got a skin problem and it keeps getting worse through the episode. That whole storyline got cut. She was on a fishing boat topless with some guy and she passed out and got sun poisoning. Oh my God. <laughs> and that all got cut. Oh so they like really didn't want you wearing a shirt during the show, did they? Uh, well, know. luckily it was uh, not HBO, I'm just saying. That would have been totally dangerous, as I said. But yeah, th but that's a great question. Awesome. Thank, Thank you. you so much. Thank you. Okay, I, I'm gonna, okay, I know. You guys are like, I know. I, no, are you guys okay? Is everybody okay? Okay, I'm sorry. Okay. Right. What's your name? Don't fall asleep. Thanks. Um, Cindy. Hi, Cindy. Um, Jim has pulled so many pranks on Dwight. Which one would you say is your favorite prank that he pulled? I'm going to say a quiet place. I'm just kidding. Um, so, so. <laughs> it's kind of a great prank. Um, I love the exercise ball. Um, the second take we did was, or maybe it was the third, it was so hilarious because the, the joke was that um, uh, Dwight is like, superior to everyone so he's he doesn't need a chair anymore and he's on his exercise ball and he's going to work out and like you know strengthen his core while everyone else is getting fat and eating donuts so jim literally takes the scissors and skewers the ball well the first couple takes like they had a spot that they was like this is a good spot for it and it was like Sss. it was so slow that he was like Brr. like you saw him like <laughs> And it was getting longer and longer. Every time they changed the ball to do another one, I was like, it was just so slow. And then the third take, John Krasinski hit this one spot, and it was like, the thing exploded. And he was just down on the ground. It was like the whole thing. It was the f craziest, fast. It was like a cartoon. And that's the one they ended up keeping. It was such a great take. And we have no idea why he did it 14 times, and then like the one time he hits a different spot, and the whole ball explodes. And also, I like the one where he moves his desk into the men's room and Kevin's coming out. So good. And I do like Asian Jim too. There's so many. There's so yes. many. There's so many. So many. So many. It's a great question. Thank you Thank so you. much. Thank you. What's your name? Hi, I'm hey. Jonathan. Hey, Jonathan. This is like really surreal. <laughs> Dude. Okay. Yeah, so my You're question okay. was, who are you still like really close to on set? Was there a certain person that you were closest to when filming? Are you still close with them? Um, you know what? Uh, there's a couple. Um, I, I do see Oscar sometimes. And um, um, yes, please clap for Oscar. Um, uh, actually, I think we're going to do a con together in September. In, I'm sorry, in October in uh, San Antonio. But um, yeah, and I see Angela sometimes. Like sometimes we get busy. Like I was on the road for a lot, so I, I couldn't see people. For, and then Angela was shooting in... Vancouver and I didn't see her for a while but I'm starting to see her again and then um, Craig Robinson he sometimes gets too busy but like I'd say Craig and Oscar more and then Angela third does that answer your question thank yeah you thank so you much. thank you I appreciate it thanks what's your name hi I'm Elizabeth hi, and Elizabeth. first I would like to point out that my friend drew you on my <gasps> what <laughs> that's not a tattoo no that's not permanent lucky you not oh yet oh my gosh that's <laughs> That's awesome. I need to get a picture. I, come on, I, I need oh, to get a picture of that. Come on, let's make it happen. And then, can somebody take a picture of her? Me taking a picture of her, please. Okay, here we go. There we go. Oh my God, what is happening? Actually, I'm, I'm gonna jump off and take a selfie with your leg. Sorry. A leg selfie. All right, here we go. Okay, legs. Sorry, guys. All right, leg. Get ready. Good. Here somebody we go. Take a, is, can we, somebody send you a picture? Okay, because that's amazing. And you're here. I can take one of you taking one. We can do a meta thing. Oh, wow. I'm a little late. There you go. Oh my god. Ah. <laughs> That's such a good picture. <laughs> I will post it on Instagram. Thank you. Thank you and thank your friend. Thank oh, you so thanks. much. Thank you. Okay. I'm going a long way. How are you guys doing? How's everybody how's everybody in the cheap seats? You good? <laughs> Woo. Sorry. Sorry guys. And, and your other leg is. I have Danica not been working crazy. out today. I'm stuck <laughs> behind a desk the whole sorry. I'm She's doing her laps. There we go. Sorry. <laughs> I also have an actual question. Yes. Um, who do you think is a Scranton Strangler? Um, I think we just had this conversation. That's Maybe okay. We can have it again. Just so you know. Um, Creed wishes it was Creed, but I think it's Toby. Oh, so. That's, that's a good answer, I must say. I approve. Yes, thank you. <laughs> thank you for the awesome. And thank you for wearing a fake tattoo. You're awesome. Thank you so much. Oh, thank, thank you. you so can I ask who you think it is? Like, is there... Yes. Toby. Is there any other theories besides, like, Toby and, like you said, maybe, yeah, maybe Creed? Yeah. Jim? I would say Robert California Toby. before I'd say Jim. That dude is dark. Oh, <laughs> What's your name? Hi, my name's John. I'm a hey, big John. fan. Thank you so much. 
I wanted to ask, um, in the episode of The Office where everybody gets lice, yes. <laughs> did you actually shave your head? I did not. <laughs> Have you shaved your head? No. Would you shave your head? No. Okay. <laughs> Um, I, I did have a bald cap dude. We talked about, you probably came in late, but I've already answered that question. And we had, there was the dude from the Star Trek. Can we rewind? Can you just, pl- what, she filmed the whole thing. Just talk to her. See if you can. Here we go. Uh, no, 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 no but it was, I, I did not, but I, I'm, I have respect for anybody that shaves their head. I do. And I think it's awesome. And I thought I, Meredith kind of looked like Benjamin Franklin when she first started <laughs> shaving down the middle. <laughs> I thought they did a great job. So fold them. We fold them again. Thank you so much. Thank Appreciate you. it. Thanks, John. What's your name? Sophia. Hey. hey Sophia. Hi. Um, so my qu- oh my god, I'm gonna raise it. All right. So my question is filming a show like The Office where it's so it's so like closely like it tries to assemble like a, a real life, like it follows like everybody has their own lifestyles and their own life paths and everything. Filming that for such a long time and then, you know, the whole ending and then the recap at the end, like did it ever feel like surreal to you? Like did you ever have moments where you're like, Oh my god, like that's literally something Meredith would do or like you ever found yourself in the character for a moment when Absol- you're not I mean, Absolutely, especially when I'm hungover. Um, <laughs> uh, you know, it's so weird because uh, I, I don't, um, my boyfriend was the still photographer from NBC. I actually met him on the show. I mean, he still is the NBC photographer, but he, I met him on the show and he used to set himself up in the fake men's room. So I always knew where to find him. He wasn't on every episode. He, he didn't work every episode, but they put him in the finale and... Um, I'm actually, da- Meredith's dancing with him at Dwight and Angela's wedding when Michael and, uh, and Dwight are doing their big crazy dance number. <laughs> We're on the dance floor. They also gave my boyfriend a line because he's a photographer. So he was the photographer in the scene when they reveal Pam's mural. Uh-huh. So, um, and he's like, just a few more pictures. And then we all sneak out to go back to the office. We go up the stairs out of the warehouse. If you remember this. But for me, it's like, I get so emotional. Like, I just caught that on TV. I was out of town and I was like, I, I, it just... I think because, I mean, some of it's because um, my life completely changed because of the office. Um, I was waiting tables when I first got the job, and I kept my job through the, um, the restaurant job through the first season of the office because I didn't know if we were going to get picked up. So I covered my shifts during the week, and I worked my Sunday brunch. And then, like, you know, luckily a year later, it all worked out, but you never know. So, yeah, I'm, I always get super emotional. I do have those moments where I'm, I, <laughs> I can't believe how life uh, at, at, like the gifts that life has given me in the office is probably the biggest gift ever because I got a fella a sh- and a show at the same time from the same <laughs> people and the nicest people and just and just the best fans. So thank you so much. It's a great question. Thank, thank you. you. What's your name? Hi, I'm Summer. Um, okay, do you remember the episode where Creed came in for the Halloween party and he was covered in blood but he didn't know it was Halloween? <laughs> Yes. So if you think um, Toby is the Scranton Strangler, do you think Creed killed someone? I was going to say, I think Creed wishes he was the Scranton Strangler. So Scranton do you think that he probably faked it or something, or do you think he actually Dude, did it? I, 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 I think Meredith was too drunk to notice, personally. <laughs> Um, and I think if she took him, I, I don't think she paid much attention to Creed. And Creed obviously didn't pay attention to her, because when he asked if he got it on, he didn't remember. Yeah. So, Yeah. So thank you so much. Thanks for the question. Thank Thanks. you. I think I think they got Creed in the end though, didn't yeah. they? Yeah. Hmm. Mm. All right. What's your name? Hi, I'm Vanessa. Hey, Vanessa. Uh, I just wonder, the scene is it was based on the British Office. Yes. If Ricky Gervais, at, at the beginning, did you like watch it to have some input or Ricky Gervais or because he, he always says just give me the royalties but <laughs> right 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 well I have to tell you I watched the show before I watched the British version before it, it this was even you know a possibility and I was nervous uh, of course because it's such a great show um, and Ricky he only came around a little bit and I always felt like he felt like if he said too much the whole thing was just going to burst in a bubble and it would just disappear like a dream that was always my uh, thinking around, the, he was always very cautious. We like, hey, like he didn't really want to speak up too much. We hung out with him more at award shows. He was much friendlier then because, probably because he had a drink. I don't know. Um, but Stephen Merchant actually came and directed one episode, okay, and I yeah. felt that was wonderful because um, I felt like we all kind of got into the head of that whole process, their process, which was great. So yeah, and, but I definitely felt like we were invited to make it our own, um, which I think is why it's longer than 13 episodes. But that's a great question. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. 
Was there a, a Meredith like equivalent on the UK version? Uh, it's, she's sort of a morph of two different people, and I guess there's a uh, there's a shower episode where someone gives a dildo. I, I think that's the character. I, I can't I can't remember her name, but yeah, there is something. There's a crossover. There's some something derivative of Meredith for sure, but it's a, l- a wee bit you. different, as we say. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <same thing. laughs> What's your name, Maggie? Um, I was wondering if you yourself could get a Dundee, what would it be? Well, I have a Dundee. Well, Meredith has a Dundee. I actually got to keep my Dundees. Um, keep your Dundees, kids, whatever you do in life. Um, what would my, I'd say, most grateful. Yeah, because I, nothing's kind of lost on me. I mean, even being here with you guys, it's pretty cool to come to, to uh, Fort Lauderdale, Florida, and um, have a room across from the beach and get to hang with you guys who actually give a flying crap about like, what you did a few years ago. It's kind of awesome. So I am really grateful. Thanks. Thank you. What's your name? Ryan. Hey, Ryan. Hi. Um, Ryan so started the fire. Yeah. Is it Ryan? Sorry. That's all right. I could do um, that with you guys, right? It's yeah. okay, right? Okay, just um, so my question is, um, in the episode where Michael roasts everyone and he says, uh, Meredith, you've slept with so many guys, you're starting to look like one. Um, <laughs> <laughs> was it, was that scripted or was that uh it was scripted improv? but in all in all fairness I did look like a man I'm just kidding um uh, I thought that no it was it was scripted and I thought it was hilarious and I thought oh wow are the, do the writers think I look like a dude what I still thought it was funny I mean you know yeah but uh yeah uh, so much of the writing was I felt improvised but it was it was written. Scripted. Yeah. Okay. That's a great question. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks, Ryan. <laughs> Boom. Roasted. All right. What's your name? Uh, Nika. Hey, Nika. Hi. I was wondering, I knew that the um, rumor about an office reboot is just a rumor. Um, rumor, sorry. But uh, It's a rumor, too. That's good. <laughs> <laughs> um, would you like to do it if there was one? I, I'm to- my politics is that I'm pro-reboot. I would do it in a second. It was like the best job ever. I don't know. Well, who knows? I mean, maybe you guys need to like write, shout, write your congress. Don't write your congressman. They've got enough to do. Um, but maybe write the network. I don't know. I mean, I feel like if the fans speak, it might actually happen. We can tweet. You know, she like if right now we can literally all tweet. Maybe we can trend. Do you want to waste Twitter? I guess you do. Yes, let's waste Twitter on this. Please. I, think, I feel like actually, we should. It's actually more important than some of the things. What am I saying? Um, that would be awesome. Yes, speak up. Whatever. You, yes, whatever means possible. Yes. Yeah, that's 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 a. Thank you. Thank I appreciate. You. That it. would, I would be do awesome. It. I, I, would I, would I think we all would. I, I, oh yeah, we'll see. Not all, but I don't know. Who knows? <laughs> What's your name? Karen. Hey, Karen. Hi. Um, who is? Who would you say is most like their character, and who's the least like their character? I would say that Rain Wilson is most like Dwight. <laughs> wow. And I would say that I would say that S- Steve Carell is least like Michael Scott. He's a really smart guy, and Michael's kind of a dumbass. <laughs> He's still got the ladies, though. So well, know. that's true. That's true. Um, yeah, yeah. But that I would. That's what. I, yeah. And I feel like. He's rarely awkward, and Michael Scott, of course, is always awkward. And, you know, there's this um, thing that Steve once said. We said, if you don't know a Michael Scott, you are a Michael Scott. <laughs> Which is really brilliant. <laughs> He's a brilliant guy. Thank you. What's your name? Hi, hey. Mark. Hey, Mark. Um, going back to the... Moroccan Christmas improv. Um, what mm-hmm. else would you consider a top improvised moment on the show that we might not know was improvised? Um, you know, hmm. even just the first Christmas episode, I actually just added a little thing, and I didn't think it was that big of a deal, but it, they... Oh, actually, no, no, no. First season, during healthcare, um, when Dwight is telling us about our crappy plan, and Meredith puts her hands up and says... Um, um, you know, the uterus is different. You know, I have a vagina. Uterus is different from a vagina. That was all improvised. <laughs> so, and actually, the network was fighting with the producers because they didn't like that word. So they didn't want to use it. And I was still waiting tables, and, and one of the producers came in and was like, we're fighting for that scene. We really want to keep it in. I'm like, oh, my God. So, yeah, that was, uh, that was, um, that was really, really fun and crazy. And I just like that Rain Wilson just kept pushing it and pushing it. And just pushing the conversation longer and longer. <laughs> and they kept it all in. Crazy. Thank you. Thank you. What's your name? Um, Allie. 
Hi, Allie. Um, so while filming this show, did you have like a trick to not laugh since it's so funny? I sometimes would act like I was in a drama. I would sometimes bite my cheek. Um, it was always really cold because Steve Carell likes every, right? he's, he's kind of a sweaty guy. So we had to shoot in really, really cold temperature. And like literally we had, I was like hiding Uggs underneath my desk. Sometimes we actually had heaters under the desks. It was crazy. So sometimes being cold was helpful because <laughs> um, I, I didn't feel like I, when you're warm, you're sort of like laughing and loose. And if you're freezing, you're like, okay, okay let's just keep going. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so I guess not one specific tr trick, but sort of a, a group of different ones. But that's a great question. Thank you. Does that work like the biting the cheeks thing? A little bit. You're like, because anything that causes you pain will get you to stop laughing. You know, that's all. I right. just don't want to ruin the take because he's so funny. Hi. Um, hi, my name is Clara. I hope you're having a wonderful day. I am, Clara. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Um, I had a question just for Giggles. Due to your performance in the office, I've had a very important question to ask you. Do you secretly work for the FBI? <laughs> <laughs> if, if I tell you, I have to kill you. No, I'm just kidding. I, I don't. That's an awesome. That would be an awesome trait. Mm -hmm. Uh, I'm, I'm sorry to disappoint you. I, my life is a little more boring. Although, although my life is not boring, but it's not FBI interesting. I'm so sorry. But thank that's, you so I, much. Thank you so much. You're so cute. Thank you. <laughs> What's your name? Hi, my name is Amanda. I wanted to know what is the most uncomfortable slash awkward scene you've ever had to film in the office? Uh, which topless scene can I... Uh, <laughs> Um, oh my gosh, I even, Beach Games was a little intimidating when I was like doing my talking head because I, Meredith forgets that she's wearing a bathing suit and she's like, can't wait to get, you know. Um, and our director was Harold Ramis and Harold Ramis is the guy that wrote and directed uh, Groundhog Day among a million other things. But I knew, I, I knew of him when I worked at Second City and he was so, like, I, I was so intimidated. He was a lovely guy, but I was like, oh my God, I was such, such a one, of, he was one of my heroes. So I think that might have been the hardest, was just ugh, being topless in front of Harold Ramis. <laughs> yeah, thank you, thank you very much. Thanks. <laughs> Yay, topless, there we go. Topless. Right. What's your name? Hi, my name's Craig. Hey, Craig. Um, so I, my question was, um, did the office seem like, like when you were auditioning for it, like it was gonna be something that was gonna be as big as it was, and the second part to that is, for being involved in it, can you think of a moment in your life when, you, when it like shocked you like just how famous you were getting as a member of this cast? Um, I, we had no idea it was gonna be this big. Uh, we were just really lucky to get another season. And then when Steve Carell did, uh, 40 Year Old Virgin was coming out as we were filming season two, and that's when everyone was like, we love this guy. And so everybody started focusing on him. And so suddenly like, the show got more episodes and more episodes and more episodes, so we were golden, as they say, but it was, <coughs> excuse me, it was a, thank you, thank you guys, that was awesome, thank you. Um, you're very polite people here in Florida, thank you. Um, uh, you know, it was, it was very um, unexpected, and um, I also feel like, I don't know if you guys remember this, but Friends had been off the, the air for a year because Joey was on when we started, and they thought Joey was gonna be this big hit, and Joey tanked it, baby. <laughs> The numbers are terrible. So that's the only reason why we got a second chance was because Joey sucked. Really? Yeah, I swear. And so, but then like people, it started catching on. Kind of like when people talk about like, I hated the show at first and then I loved it. It was kind of like that when we first started. So I felt like it just started catching on and, and I don't know, I just felt like the writing got really good. And uh, I mean, it was always good, but I feel like season two, they really kind of figured out how Michael Scott could be really annoying, but also you could actually care about him, which is a hard thing to do, because I always cared about Jim and Pam, of course. So the show always had a lot of heart, but I, I feel like they kind of figured out. Anyway, so all of a sudden, I felt like people were noticing us, and um, I think when, oh my God, I, I just remember being like at the Golden Globes and like Sean Penn's like, hey man, I'm like, what? Like there's... A few people that you're just like, oh my God, I can't believe you know who I am and that you watch the show. I mean, that, that's, it's kind of mind blowing. Um, but you know, little, literally like I'll be stay, I've stayed at a hotel 
and someone got married there and literally pulled me into their wedding pictures. And I'm <laughs> equally as impressed by that. I'm like, really? This is your one day to get married and you're going to ruin it with the floozy drunk from the office? <laughs> okay, here we go. I'm not even dressed up. Woohoo! Who's the homeless woman you dragged in the pictures? Way to go. So, it, it's, it, so yeah, did I answer both of your questions? Yes. You're awesome. Thank you so much. Thank All you. Right. Thank you very Thank you. much. So we have about 10 minutes left. Okay, awesome. What's your name? Hi. Hi, I'm Libby. Hey, uh, how are you? Hi. Uh, so I just wanted to know, when you're not um, acting or voice acting, what do you like to do in your free time? Uh, I have no free time. I'm exhausted. <laughs> well, I don't know if you know this. I actually tour with Jane Lynch. Um, Jane Lynch and I do a live show. We're actually going to be uh, all over Florida in December. We're do we did a Christmas album uh, a year and a half ago, and uh, so we do a big Christmas tour, and then we're doing a bunch of shows. So that's, I love to do that. I also have a comedy lounge act called The Lampshades, where we do like mashups of 70s and 80s songs, and we're, um, we usually play once a month at a comedy club in LA, and that's really fun. Um, I don't know, I also play the piano. I volunteer for a charity organization. I play the piano once a month for them. They don't even know who I am, they don't <laughs> care. Um, which is kind of cool. I kind of, you know, showbiz is fun, but it's not everything, you know. It's kind of nice to be with the real world. Cool. Um, because there's nothing more real than a Comic-Con, you guys. <laughs> this is the real world, too. Don't get me wrong. Sorry. You guys are awesome, and I love that, like, you guys have so much creativity and intelligence in what you're wearing and the questions you're asking. So thank you. Thanks. That's awesome. Well, what's Hi your name? There. Hi. Hi. I'm Suzanne. Hi, Suzanne. Hi. I wanted to ask you, with so many rich characters and such an ensemble cast, did you ever have to like lobby the writers for more screen time, or did you ever write something and bring it in and say, this might be good for Meredith's storyline? You know what? I was really cautious not to do that, because I noticed, I saw a couple other people doing it, and I thought it backfired. <laughs> Um, I was just really patient, and I'm I'm glad I was because I almost feel like Meredith's character was like a chess like they were playing a chess game with that character, where you barely saw her moving, and then all of a sudden you know checkmate you know there'd be something wacky. But I love the fact that when you work in a big office, the, you don't know everybody, and you don't even know their story right away. And sometimes people pop up in your life. Or if you're in school too, it's the same thing. It's like suddenly you'll just like notice somebody. You're like, that's weird, and then you won't notice them again for. Like I just thought it was so brilliantly designed. And it's I don't even know if it was a, an intentional design, but it became this wonderful um, pattern where you know every time I had an interesting scene, it was totally worth the wait. And I felt like the audience has definitely responded to that too. I mean, some people say that Meredith was underused, but I almost feel like she just never outwore her welcome. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And some of the other characters, when you become more part of the regular plot, then you start talking more, and then people don't listen as much. Yeah, yeah so thanks. Great. Less is more, everybody. That's the lesson from that. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks. All right, these are our last three questions. What's your name? Ryan. Hi, Ryan. I'm back. You're back, thanks. <laughs> After working on The Office, uh, I'm sure it opened doors for you, right? Yes, somebody just opened my door on the, the way back there. Yeah, it's awesome. <laughs> Uh, do you plan on working on anything soon or maybe later? I actually have a new show on Hulu that just started streaming in May. It's called All Night mm -hmm. and uh, it's, um, uh, it's a, a, like a, a grad night comedy. And so I actually play the principal of a high school and the, all the kids are locked in the school and the entire season is one night. So everybody's like, so I couldn't gain an ounce of weight. And I, had to, I kept cutting to cut my hair so it was just per the perfect same length. But yeah, so I'm, I'm doing that. I'm also on OKKO, um, Let's Be Heroes on Cartoon Network. I'm touring with Jane Lynch. Um, I don't know, I'm doing some guest star stuff. I just did a match game. There's, you know, I'm kind of all over the place right now. And I kind of like not having a schedule too, but I miss not having a regular schedule. So we might be back for another season of the Hulu show. We'll find out soon. But yeah, I don't know if anything will top equal or measure up to the office, but it's all good. Thanks. One, one more really yes. quick. Uh, during the lip dub episode, oh, the yeah. opening, yes. uh, did they have a long time setting you up with uh, Kevin? You know what? We were totally fine, although I feel really bad for Brian Baumgartner for having to carry his, <laughs> my entire weight on his back. That was so crazy. But the first time we shot it, it was perfect, except they said that the makeup, the, the marker for the word nobody on my fat stomach wasn't, wasn't dark enough. So we had to do it again. They had to darken the nobody. I was so bummed because I felt I felt like I let everybody down. Maybe my skin absorbed the ink. I don't know, but anyway, what's up? 
Thank you so much. Thank you guys. What's your name? Hi there. My name's Molly. Hey, um, Molly. I know you mentioned Cartoon Network earlier, mm -hmm. and you like you are really appreciative of the shows and stuff on that. I was just wondering, since you're at a con, if you have any other like favorite fandoms or anything that you're particularly interested in. Um, well, I I actually love Guardians, and I'm so glad Sean Gunn's here. Mm -hmm. um, he's he's awesome, and I and his of course. Um, um, James is awesome. And you know, James used to be married to Jenna Fisher from The Office. Mm -hmm. So I remember when James was doing other sci-fi stuff that was like not quite his dream and he's reached his dream and now you it's your dream. You know, everybody's like in on it. It's fantastic. So I just love the way that things evolve sometimes. It's, it's, it's awesome. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so thank you. Oh, thank yeah, you. Thanks. All right, Kate, this is our final question. Oh my gosh. Hi again. It better be. Uh, this is a real question. Okay, great. Uh, you guest starred in the uh, show Brooklyn Nine Nine. I yes. remember. Um, what are your thoughts on its recent cancellation? Well, it actually got picked up by NBC. It did. It did. I did yeah. not hear yes. that. Yes, yes. I am so happy now. Yes, Thank you they for rescued me. it at the last minute. You Thank might you. see Mean Marge again. I played Mean Marge. Right. She's adorable. Looking forward. I'm just kidding. To Thank you guys. We're Thank ending you so on much. a positive note. So yes. before we wrap this up. Yes. Our